The skate is definitely a huge aspect in hockey. The reason the game is so fast paced is placed solely on the blades cutting through the ice so gracefully. Skate blades weren't always the thin piece of metal we're used to seeing today. For the longest time, skates were just the easiest way to get across the ice fast. And for hundreds of years, the traditional skate blade wasn't even used. That's why I think we should take a look back at what is fundamentally the most important equipment a hockey player needs, the ice skate. I said all your equipment's important, but none of it's more important than your skates. Make sure you take care of them, protect the blades, watch out for nicks, and make sure you dry your blades after every time you skate. The earliest ice skates that were developed can be traced back to southern Finland in about 3000 BCE as a way for people to travel along the ice without using too much energy. The skate was crafted using large leg bones of cattle or deer, which they shaped into blades to wear on their feet. The bones were flat along the bottom, which meant the wearer could not push off with each foot the way we do today. Instead, skaters moved forward by pushing with a long pole held between their legs. Although turning was difficult, it was possible to go pretty fast. Definitely a lot faster than legging it. Bone skate blades gained traction throughout Europe over the next few centuries, and continued to be used in the 20th century in a few places because they were so inexpensive and the materials were easy to find. From about 1300 to 1850, Europe experienced what is called the Little Ice Age, leading to longer, colder winters. This made ice skating much more popular, and allowing more innovations for the ice skate. In the 1400s, the Dutch created a wooden blade with a flat strip of iron along the bottom. These iron bottom blades created much more friction against the ice, which means they didn't glide as well as the bones, but a skater with iron blades no longer needed to push with poles to propel themselves forward, and could push off with each foot a first step towards the modern skate we know today. The first double-edged blade was also a Dutch invention, appearing around 1500. It was now possible to propel yourself with your legs and glide after each stride, making ice skating a far less laborious task and allowing skaters to go much faster. At this point, skate blades were still tied to the skater's shoes or boots. That was until 1848 when a Pennsylvanian man named E.V. Bushnell invented an all-metal blade that clamped directly to the boot which revolutionized the sport by allowing sharper, faster turns, and even jumping. The boot clamp was followed in 1863 by the Acme Club Skate, patented by Star Manufacturing of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, which featured a self-fastening skate blade with a mechanical lever. The rise of ice hockey as a sport kickstarted a period of innovation that began with the very first skate designed specifically for hockey, the Star Hockey Skate, which was introduced in 1866. Star's hockey skate had a wider blade, which was rocker-shaped rather than straight, and rounded at the front and back. This allowed for tighter turns while also allowing for sudden stops and starts. Start introduced the first tube skate, in which the blade was held by a tubular carrier, which then attached to the boot. The star hockey skate remained popular among hockey players well into the 1920s. As the rules of ice hockey became established by the late 1800s, so did the need for sturdier skates. In 1914, the closed toe blade made from one piece of steel, enabling skates to be lighter and stronger, was invented by John E. Strauss, a blade maker from St. Paul, Minnesota. The first two decades of the 20th century saw the launch of many more hockey skate manufacturers. In 1899, Toronto's CCM, Canadian Cycle and Motor Company, began producing bicycles and automobiles. Looking for new businesses, they launched a line of ice skates in 1905. The CCM automobile line of ice skates got its name because the blades were made from metal left over from the manufacturing of Russell motor cars. That same year, a Canadian shoemaker named George Tackaberry built a pair of ice skates for his neighbor, a hockey defenseman named Joe Hall, who had complained that he couldn't find skates that could last a whole season. Using his boot making skills, Tackaberry used kangaroo leather to build a boot with a reinforced heel and toe, as well as a thicker tongue. He also lowered the top of the boot two inches to improve mobility. Once other players saw Hall's new skates, Takaberry was in demand. CCM made a huge impact on the ice hockey market until the late 1920s, when the Bauer family, owner of the Western Shoe Company in Kitchener, Ontario, began producing the first skates in which the blade was permanently attached to the boot. The company's signature model, the Bauer Supreme, came on the market in 1933. It was immediately popular, and Bauer became the major competitor to CCM. CCM purchased the Tackaberry brand in 1937 and introduced the legendary CCM Tax. Both the Bauer Supreme and CCM Tax are still made today, although in much improved and updated versions. 
Eventually, skates from European makers such as the Swiss company Graf, which began producing hockey skates in 1937, became available in North America. These imports were among the reason that Star went out of business in 1938, unable to compete in a difficult market during tough economic times. Very little changed over the next few decades. With Bauer and CCM leading the market, other companies did spring up, but would eventually disappear. Hockey skates continued to be made with leather boots and tubular blades exclusively. The rise in popularity of hockey in the USA from the late 1960s through the 1970s, as well as the NHL going from the original six teams in 1967 to 21 teams in 1980, sparked an expansion of the market and a series of advancements in hockey skate technology. The 1970s saw the introduction of molded plastic skate boots, based on ski boot designs. Lang first introduced these models, featuring a hinged plastic boot and a foam liner. They were endorsed by NHL players, including Phil Esposito. The skates forced the wearer to lean forward slightly, which helped them maintain a good hockey stance. But the plastic boots were quite heavy, and some players didn't like how they looked. The molded plastic boots concept was taken up in the 1980s by companies such as Micron and Bauer, whose turbo model was very popular. Bauer's amazing plastic tuck 2000 blade holders were released in 1976. They replaced the tubular blades, making skates lighter and allowing easier changing of blades. Within a few years, most manufacturers had gone to plastic holders as well. Bauer surged in popularity while CCM struggled, eventually going bankrupt in 1983. This was not the end of the CCM brand, though. The brief entry of sports giants, including Nike and Reebok, into the skate manufacturing landscape shifted many things. Nike purchased Bauer in 1995, then sold it in 2005. Bauer's parent company is now Peak Achievement Athletics. In 2016, Bauer acquired the company Easton Hockey Equipment, so if you're wondering where those guys fit in the story, it's around now. After its bankruptcy in the early 1980s, CCM was bought by Reebok in 2004. In 2006, Reebok was purchased by Adidas, who sold the CCM brand to a private equity firm in 2017. When Adidas purchased Reebok in 2006, Reebok owned CCM, Tackaberry, Jofa, Heaton, Titan, and Coho. This made them the second biggest sports equipment manufacturer behind Nike. A lot of the ownership have changed since then, but that was a fun fact. Today, CCM and Bauer once again dominate the hockey skate market. The 1980s and 90s saw amazing improvements in the blade's coating, boot materials, and fit, and strategic placements of padding, but no real great leaps forward. Beginning in the early 2000s, there was an intense period of competitive innovation that's still going on today. The goal was to improve the modern skate in every aspect, to help players start quicker, go faster, turn better, and be more comfortable. As you can see, we have it made when it comes to hockey skates in this day and age. But throughout every generation, it never mattered what was on your feet, it was the fun you were having on the ice. That's why it doesn't matter if you're rocking figure skates, hockey skates, or even speed skates. Whether you're a Connor McDavid or you're… me. Like I said, it's all about the fun you're having, and the memories you're making. So lace up your skates and get out there. I'll be sure to see you on the ice.